really reinforces our message that a real content strategy is driven by our mission, our niche who we are, um, the strategy that we're developing to really articulate that mission and the audience for that strategy, um, for our different tactics. And those are the filters that we put on the stories. So we are going to be looking for stories through those lenses. We're not necessarily um, just looking for stories that are great. We're looking for stories that matter. So um, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, it's a real mix of our skill sets. We have you know, policy, um, scientific, um, you know, very rational thinkers in our nonprofits, and there's a lot of brain trust that exists. And um, we also have the creatives and people who live and read stories. And it's trying to bring those two groups together because um, we, we can't really uh, we can't be effective if we're one or the other. Um, and so we have our large scale strategy, and then we have our like these are our tactics. And you know we all kind of get excited when we see like oh yeah Twitter, uh, <laughs> but it's not about the tools. It's not about the specifics. You know, it's about recognizing that there's an increasing level of effort that goes into different channels. And um, here, this is this is one way to start thinking about some of the stories you have. And we have kind of a long form story that can take the form of a newsletter, of a blog post, um, of a press release. These are all our, um, you know, they require structure and they require um, kind of. A method for telling your story, but you know there's a little bit more freedom in it. Um, when we move to effectively using um, tools such as Facebook and Twitter, we have to start becoming more interesting, and we really are filtering our long version stories to see what's going to be interesting and engaging for my Facebook audience, and what is going to be um, kind of knowledge leadership and timely for my Twitter audience. And these are, it, it's, it's much harder to be useful in those spaces and, and to really cut through, you know, big pictures and, um, you know, the latest Huffington Post article. Uh, so those things are, <laughs> it's, uh, it shouldn't be understated that, you know, you have all of this material and of course this is part of your outreach and promotion strategy for your web stuff, but is a filter that gets put on there and you know writing a good Facebook update that you know really gets to the core of what you're trying to say to get people to click through and read more. It, it is a bit of a talent for all those accidental things and you are doing this on a daily basis. Um, it's something you refine. Um, and then we move into, you know, so we, we got some good feedback, we got like our analytics are telling us that this is good, you know, it's a good commentary and retweeting. Okay, so we're starting to get a sense that this is something that resonates. So it might actually be worth it to put in the effort of a video, um, significant effort of doing a video. It might be worth hiring a graphic designer to create an infographic. It might be worth um, get hiring a photographer or, you know, really soliciting the best volunteer photographer to capture our event and try and tell the story and really think about the types of pictures that we need from this event that will help us to convey the story afterwards. So, um, you know, this, it isn't to say that, um, you know, these things don't all have their own aspects of, of difficulty or nuance, but it's, it's just something to think about in terms of uh, the tactical elements of, of the decisions that you use, what channels you're trying. Um, and the fact that all of this really needs to feed back into your strategy and you know what was effective, what channels were supportive, what channels actually felt totally flat. Like our newsletter was amazing, but the video, you know, we we had you know 500 people forward this message to their friends, but our video only got you know 150 views. So was it really worth our time and effort? Hmm. But this is this is a process. And the most important thing, again, is the focus on the campaign goal. Ultimately, fussing around with Twitter doesn't really matter. 
even though it's very immediate and in your face, um, it's not really about the technology. It's about the vision and, and, uh, and how, this, how this all integrates together to create effective So how many of us are familiar with story narrative? Just a show of hands. A few people here. It's narrative art. Um, that this is, you know, if you think of your favorite movie, your favorite fairy tale, <laughs> your favorite superhero story, there's always uh, a character who we, for some reason, start getting hooked into. Maybe the details of their life, maybe there's something um, that just seems a little bit uh, kind of uh, compelling about this person, and that something goes wrong. They get bitten by a radioactive spider, you know, they fall down a well, um, and <laughs> there's, there's an adventure that ensues. And there are choices that are made within this struggle that ultimately resolve to tell us a moral, to tell us about our values. We use this as an age-old method for conveying our best values. And so the narrative arc is one that you'll recognize in all of your stories. And watch your favorite movie, you'll probably feel this. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So it's, it's, it's not a, a complex thing, but doing it well requires a lot of practice. So take it easy on yourselves. You're not going to walk away from this being like a master storyteller. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's actually, um, it requires some play. It requires some time. And um, what we're going to do here is give you a structure that will help you to better tell your organizational campaigning stories. And Marshall Gans is an academic from Harvard. He's an activist and organizer from the 60s. He really um, provided uh, the Obama campaign with a, a really solid structure from which they were able to um, mobilize supporters, um, create engaging campaigners, and it went right up through the chain. It was, um, this public narrative was present even back in 94 when Obama gave his, his uh, Democratic National Convention speech. And um, it's, it's really sharing the story of self, where you get to meet him, you hear about you know, how his dad grew up in Kenyan Village, and you know, it, it was uh, this compelling story of his roots and his parents' hard work to send him to the best schools in the country. And then he, you know, we, it, woven into this story of America and all of these dreams of, that are realized, you know, whenever our parents um, give us everything and, um, you know, we have this uh, inborn desire for freedom. <laughs> so, you know, I, I hope that makes sense um, to those of you who are familiar with the American dream. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, and he really calls us to protect that American dream, to protect those who um, who are struggling and uh, and um, are struggling to have to get a job, who are struggling to take care of their kids. That that it's part of our nature in achieving our dreams that we're all thriving, and this is part of part of growing our whole society. So um, Obama as a far more skilled organizer than I, can really draw you in. And he did that time and time again, right up to the Obama Way Big Victory. So, yeah, 2004, 2008, there was um, a massive groundswell of individuals that just fell in love with Obama. I know I, I definitely um, joined So, um, uh, and it was to, you know, we can think of his charisma, but we can also think of the methods that supported that campaign. So, um, so what we're going to do now, we've been talking about stories now for an hour, and what I would love for you to do is to just start taking a look at these worksheets that we've got in front of us. And we're going to just start to unpack a bit of our own story itself. And the reason why we tell the story itself is because we're building trust. By being a little bit vulnerable with a challenge that you've faced in your life that's helped you get where you are, people start relating to you in a totally different way than 
when you tell them your title, <laughs> when you tell them, you know, the organization's very state mission statement. You know, people don't really care about that. They actually care about you. And why should I listen to you? And why does this matter? So um, we're going to just take a few minutes here to go through this. So um, does everyone have a pen? Does anyone need to write with? Does everyone have a copy of these worksheets? Okay, great. So um, bear with me. We're just going to get started here. So. Um, First thing that we're going to think about is at my work. This is us. This is what we do. It just top of your head. Take one minute. This is, you know, not your mission statement, but what you actually do. So, um, and for those of us who aren't with organizations, you need to go with your, um, uh, your own role. Like on behalf of organizations or uh, for yourself. So, let's just take one minute. Jot that down. Real quick. 